Hello, good morning everyone. I am SK and today we are going to discuss the current affairs of 26 November 2023 from the examination point of view and along with the Hindu analysis. So let us begin. 26 November 2023 being a Sunday, you would find that a lot of stress will be the content will be mostly based on science and technology usually on Sundays. So let us uh, go into the details. First of all, 26 November 2023 that is November 26th is celebrated as the Constitution Day of India. Constitution Day of India means it is the day on which the Const- uh, Constituent Assembly of India adopted our constitution on 26th November 1949. it came into effect on 26 january 1950 constitution day is also known as samvidhan divas so this is an important day from the exam point of view also now next coming to cop 28 meeting in dubai next week we will delve into details about this cop 28 in another uh, lecture but today from the current affairs point of view let us see what is the importance of this cop 28 meeting and what what is the agenda this year normally we know that carbon dioxide that is co2 has been known as the most dangerous greenhouse gas and all the climate talks whenever climate talks conferences or meetings happen around the world the main focus will be on reduction of co2 emissions and the harmful effects of co2 but other than co2 there are um, uh, quite a few powerful heat trapping emissions and one of them is methane so at this cop 28 meeting in dubai next week methane is g- likely to gain the main attention this is because methane remains in the atmosphere for only 10 years but it has much more warming impact than carbon dioxide the effect of methane is 28 times greater than carbon dioxide if we consider a 100 year time scale so that point was regarding ecology and environment which is a category in general studies paper so the first category can be taken under general knowledge or general awareness now the third important topic of that day is indian and italian firms joint venture in defense now this topic comes under the category of international relations as has been reported in the hindu newspaper an indian firm merlin hawk aerospace private limited has signed a joint venture agreement with italy's vega composites to establish a manufacturing and design facility in the tamil nadu defense corridor now what for what is the purpose of this uh, joint venture it is for advanced composite material based products The name of the new entity will be Merlin Hawk Composites and Engineering Private Limited. It is a strategic joint venture which aims to tap the growing market of India. Now what are all the sectors which this joint venture aims to tap? They are aerospace, marine, land and railway sectors. the aim of this joint venture is also to design to is also to develop the design expertise and also transferring the manufacturing know how manufacturing know how means manufacturing technology to india now one more thing which we have to keep in mind is india and italy have signed a defense cooperation agreement way back now after signing of that agreement this is the first such agreement 
which is signed after signing of the defense cooperation agreement this also we need to keep in mind now one of the front page news of uh, 26th november 2023 was regarding the rajasthan assembly elections now the headline says that rajasthan uh, in rajasthan assembly elections the voter turnout was at 71.6% Now this comes under the category of Indian polity. The voting took place across more than 51,000 polling stations in 199 of the assembly constituencies. Now here you can see that there are there are 200 assembly constituencies in uh, Rajasthan, but the voting took place only in 199. This is because in one of the constituencies, uh, that is Karanpur, the election was postponed due to the death of Congress candidate Gurmeet Singh Kounar. In the earlier assembly election in 2018, Rajasthan had recorded a voter turnout of 74.06%. Next comes the Yatri Seva Anubandh. Now this can this comes under the category of economy. Now what is Yatri Seva Anubandh? It's a new scheme rolled out by the Inter- Indian Railways to scale the travel experience to greater heights on Vande Bharat trains. Now we all know that high speed trains have been introduced uh, in India recently through this Vande Bharat scheme. So in that Vande Bharat scheme also now the Indian Railways is looking to enhance the travel experience Uh, similar to the feel we get while traveling on air flights or aeroplanes so this is launched as a pilot project in southern railway covering six pairs of vande bharat trains it is aimed at enhancing passenger experience by providing now what are what are the things that the indian railways plans to roll out for enhancing the customer uh, experience customer travel experience that is by providing greater choice in food and beverages and ensuring ease of travel by offering additional value added services now certain value added services are proposed to be introduced under this yatri seva anubandh such as concierge on board infotainment and access to travel essentials and accessories so these things you have to keep in mind that is what are the additional value added services and uh, the additional facilities which are proposed to be introduced by the indian railways for enhancing the customer travel experience or the passenger travel experience on vande bharat trains now next important point is regarding the montreal protocol montreal protocol comes under the category of international relations now the whenever the name montreal protocol comes we should always remember that it is pertaining to ozone ozone whenever if any match the following sort of uh, question also comes you should remember that montreal protocol is always linked with ozone ozone layer or ozone so what exactly does this montreal protocol deal with the montreal protocol had designated a list of controlled ozone depleting substances that were banned from future production in 1987 so in 1987 montreal protocol had uh, listed out uh, uh, ozone depleting substances and they were banned from future production in 1987 and this has been widely considered to be successful in ozone recovery as we all know that uh, in the antarctic region there, there is a depletion of ozone layer in other words we also we also mention it as a ozone hole over antarctica but during the past 3 years although we know that uh, the 1987 measures uh, under montreal protocol led to successful recovery of ozone or the ozone layer but during the past 3 years that is uh, 2020 to 2023 there is a reemergence of large and long lived ozone holes over antarctica in mid spring while early spring still shows a slight recovery so these are the points you need to keep in mind whenever montreal protocol 
topic comes up thank you thank you one and all